Hi there, welcome to your lesson on direct and inverse variation. To begin uh, this lesson, we're going to go back to a concept we looked at way back in Chapter 5 or Unit 5 of our, of our course. The question begins like this. A local authority pays their workers depending on the number of hours that they can work each week. If the workers are paid 22 euro per hour, complete the following table. So what will go in these boxes here? Let's say, tell me, what, uh, fill in the whole table and then tell me what goes in box in this one here under 25 and under 40. Well, here's the table you should have. Uh, I think it was a pretty simple uh, exercise here. You just had to do 22 euro times the number of hours to get the value that they're paid. So 25 euro times 22 is 550. And 35 hours times 22 euro was 770. So that is our table. Now put this on a calculator or uh, in Desmos, as I have here, and let's, let's take a look at what it means. So here, I put that data in Desmos, and I can see hours are here, and then here's the pay in euros. You can see the data lines up uh, perfectly as a linear equation. So what would be the equation for that? Can you come up with it? Okay, normally we begin with y equals mx plus c, where this is our gradient or slope, and this is our y-intercept. In this one, when you follow the data back, you can clearly see it will pass through 0, 0. So the y-intercept will be 0. So we're actually just dealing with y equals mx. And this is a very specific type of linear equation when we have the y-intercept at 0, 0. Now, in our situation, this makes sense because if there, somebody's working no hours, they will have no pay. Okay, so that slope then we can find by doing change in y over change in x, right? So y goes up how much as x goes up some amount y goes up how much and we can see for example from point to point from 20 to 25 the change in x there is 5 and the change in y value or the pay here is 110 so the change in y is 110 while the x changes by 5 and we can confirm the same rate every time up 110 up 5 up 110 up 5 so that's our slope our gradient and that works out to 22 hey wait a minute so our slope was 22 and our pay was 22 and that makes absolute sense. That means that they're being paid 22 euro for every hour work. So every additional hour gives them an additional 22 euro. 22 rise, hour over one. 22 up, over one. 22 up, over one. So that's our model there. But this kind of model is a very important one. It's called a direct variation model. When we have a linear equation or a linear uh, rule that has no y-intercept, it is called direct variation. And in this kind of situation, we can always find the m value by dividing y by x. So notice how this x can go down here. So we have y over x equals 22. What that tells us is for any point in our data set, if we divide y by x, we should get that constant value, that slope. So we could divide 660 by 30 and get 22. Or we could divide 880 by 40 and get 22. Anytime we divide a y by x value in our data set, we'll get that value here, the slope, which is this value here. That model is often uh, represented as k equals y over x, k being some constant value. In this case, the constant is 22, our slope. So that's a linear uh, direct variation linear model. So direct variation, this is a symbol we use for direct variation right here. So this says y is directly varied, directly varies with variable x. Okay, and that symbol means the same as this, that y equals some constant times x. And that's what we just looked at. Okay, so, and it always will be a linear equation passing through 0, 0, y-intercept of 0, and there's our equation, and we will always have that k value here, that slope, can be found by dividing any y-coordinate by its x-coordinate. Okay, that's direct variation. Using all that information there, you should be able to answer this question. So what equation can you write for this one here? Read it and see if you can make the equation. Okay, let's take a look together. So number of cars in the parking lot, C, varies directly. So it tells you it varies directly with the number of minutes after 8 a.m., which we're going to use M for. So we know this is going to be direct variation, so we can write it like this, right? Y equals MX, basically, or there's a constant K. No Y-intercept. But in our case, our variables are C and M. So we're going to write C, the number of cars, varies directly with uh, the number of minutes that have passed. So that's our basic equation, but we don't know K. But we can find k like this, right? So what is k? All right, so we can put those values in there. And again, when we divide y values by x, so if you divide that over there, you can get your k value of 3. So by dividing 114 by 38, and 114 is the number of cars, and 38 is 38 minutes after 8, right? So we divide the y by the x, and we get k equals 3. So now our model, we can confirm, is c equals 3m. 
That's our direct variation model for this situation. Now that we have a model, we can answer questions. So at 8, sorry, 814, how many cars were in the parking lot? Well, we use our model, we put a 14 minutes into there, and we get the number of cars to be 42. So pretty simple, it's a linear equation, it has this different name, direct variation, because it's a special type of linear equation. But remember these things here, to find the slope, y over x, and the equation always looks like this. All right, let's try another situation here. Now a local authority has decided to put artificial grass tiles on a football field. If four people are available to lay the grass tiles, it takes them two hours to complete the work. So they're putting these uh, this artificial grass on a field. If four people are working, see number of people, then it takes two hours to do this job. All right, so let's fill the table. But before filling the table, let me give you a hint. If it takes four people two hours, that means in total you have eight people eight hours of work being done, okay? And we're assuming all the people work at the same speed. So eight hours of work. <clears throat> so that should give you an idea of how to fill in the rest here. There are eight hours of work to be done, and here you have one person, two people, six people to do it. So what number should go in here? All right, here's the full table. If we have eight hours of work in total to be done, and we have one person working, then they will work for eight hours. That one we already had two people, four hours. If we had four people working, no, that's the one we had, sorry. If two people were working, um, then it would take four hours because two times four makes eight. And if six people were working, it would take one and a third hours because six times that gives us eight. So it's all about getting eight hours produced in each situation, right? Twelve people working times two thirds gives you eight hours of work being done. So I hope you're able to come up with that table. But the table tells us something important here. Now, we have a different relationship. When we multiply the y and x value, we seem to get a constant here. Every time you multiply y and x, you get 8. That's different than what we saw before here, where we divided y and x to get a constant. Now we're multiplying them to get a constant. Okay, so let's take a look at how that works. So if you graph those points, you should see this. That is definitely not linear anymore. But it does have this curve that shows as uh, one is increasing, then the other one's decreasing, but not constantly. It's doing it at a curve here. So that is a different kind of model, and it's called inverse variation. Let's take a look at that in more detail. So here's direct variation, right? We had that symbol representing variation, and we knew that symbol turned into this. In direct variation, we knew we could find the constant here by dividing y and x. Now we have inverse variation, and we could say y is inversely proportional to x. We use that same symbol here. <clears throat> See that? So y now varies inversely. Inversely always looks like this, 1 over x. Instead of x here, we have 1 over x. And then to find uh, and to write it, this in a, in, a, in a way as an equation with, without that symbol, we have the constant again, just like we had here. We have the constant. So equals the constant times 1 over x. And k times this is k over x. And now if we solve this one for k, we notice we move the x over here, and we have k equals x times y. So in inverse variation, again, when you multiply x and y, you always get a constant. <clears throat> and that's what we saw here. When you multiplied these two values, x and y, you always got 8. So that's how we get our constant now. k is called the constant of proportionality. It will always look like this. So if we go back to our data, does it look like, uh, like this kind of curve? Well, let's see. We'll see. So... Um, <clears throat> Let's say if we had to find a rule for this, well, we can write that y varies inversely with x in our situation. And in this case, okay, so y equals k over x. Then we put in a point that we know, 8, 8, 1 here, 1, 8. So 8 goes in for y, 1 goes for x. Solve for k, and we get 8. That confirms what we already saw, that when you multiply those, they always make 8. So the constant is 8. Now our model for this must be y equals 8 over x. Okay, so that's our inverse variation model for that. And now to um, check if that model actually follows this data here, let's check. I have it on Desmos. Let's see what it looks like. So here's that, that data there, hours compared to workers. And now if I put the model we just made up, which was y equals k, which was 8 over x, and there you can see the model passes through those points perfectly. So we do have this inverse variation model, which always looks like this. Okay, let's go on from there. So let's try this one. So here's inverse variation. Again, it's just like direct, except we have y uh, is related to k over x instead of k times x. So now we have this. See if you can solve this problem using that. Hope you tried that one out. Here we see it's inverse variation, it tells us. So we begin with the inverse variation model. 
I'm going to replace y and x with the variables I've been introduced here, which are g and w. So g, cost of membership, equals or varies inversely with the number of weeks, and there's a constant there. Let's find the constant by plugging in the values we know. We know membership costs 15 after five months, but notice our model is for weeks. So that's why instead of putting a 5 here, I put 20, because 5 months times 4 weeks in each month is 20 weeks. All right, that allows us to solve for k. So k is 300. So basically, we found the constant now. So now that we have that, we can make the model. So gym membership equals k, which is 300 over w. There's our inverse model. So let's see if we can answer this question. If you join for 50 weeks, how much would you pay? All right, that one is as simple as putting 50 weeks into our model, dividing, and we know the payment is 6 euro. Wow, that's cheap. Why is that so cheap for 50 weeks? Amazing. All right, so here's another one. Try this one out. Okay, this one's also inverse. So we have an inverse relationship here between uh, the hours to build and the number of workers here. And it gave us values of NN3, which allowed us to solve for K being 6. Then we have our model like this, n equals 6 over x, it's inverse. And finally, you can put the four, four people back into that model and see how many hours it would take, and it's 1.5. Now try B. All right, in B, uh, we put in the number of hours is given to us. So hours goes in, and the workers, it's unknown. So we solve that backwards and find out two workers. All right, so we've seen uh, examples of proportional relationships. We've seen direct variation or direct proportion, and we've seen inverse proportion. Now, you should know that sometimes the x value is to some power. For example, this basic direct proportion can be written like this, where that a is to some power. Or often also in the inverse proportion, see that x there is also to some power. This is common. It happens often. So let's take a look at something like this. So direct variation, and we have this problem. The distance d that a rock falls varies directly with the square of the time taken in seconds. Okay, the square of the time taken. Now, this problem is over the rocks. That's pretty exciting. It doesn't get much more exciting than that. There's a beautiful rock. Are you excited yet? Well, maybe that rock doesn't excite you, but notice the problem also says the rock is falling. Now, falling rocks. Now, that is definitely exciting. Look at that. Amazing. Still not excited? Well, what if we said we're not talking about rocks, we're talking about the rock. All right, there he is, the rock. That's super exciting now. I'm excited. And now we're talking about the rock falling. Look at this. He was in a movie called Skyscraper, and he at one point made a jump here, trying to make it in this window. But somebody's showing us all these different parabolic paths. It's impossible. He won't make it in. The rock is falling. All right, now we're excited. Let's try this problem. So we're told um, that we're dealing with direct variation. And we want to find out if the rock falls 6 meters in 2 seconds, then what is our equation for this direct variation situation? Let's try. So we have direct variation. So distance varies directly with the square of the time. It told us that, the square of the time. All right, put in that. That's our model then, kt squared. And then, because that's still direct, but there's a square here. Put in the value we know. 6, 2 is a point it gives us. 6 meters, 2 seconds. Solve for k. And we get k is 1.5. Now we have our model right here. So that's our model. Use the model to answer this question. Okay, so it's as simple as putting five seconds into our model and solving for distance, and it is 37.5 meters. Great problem. Let's look at another one. Now let's talk about the light intensity on a movie screen. It says it varies inversely with the square of the distance between the screen and projector. This is called the inverse square law. As you get further from a light source, the, the light uh, intensity is inversely related to distance. Okay, so this is inverse variation. We're given this here. Read the problem carefully, see if you can make the model. Okay, so we know light varies inversely, so it looks like this, with distance, with the square of the distance. All right, so we have that. We put in the value we know. We knew uh, 24 units, 3 meters away. And then we can find k value, which is 216. Check your work carefully. So our model must be this. Now we have to answer uh, what is the intensity, let's see, when it's 6 meters away. So now that we have the model and the k value in there, we put the 6 meters in there, and we find out the light intensity is 6. All right? Great problem. Great to see inverse variation with a square here, an inverse square relationship. Try one more like that. See if you can figure this one out. Okay, this one's a little trickier. We have our model, but now we don't have actual distance, but we say the distance is half. So we put a half in there. That means that becomes that. 
when we divide by a fraction means we can multiply by 4 on top, and that tells us that this happens here.